Hello friends, it's me Doom, and here we are on New York's Emerald Lake at the Dock of Peace, as it were. And it is, like, once again, every time I come here, raining. Just like my actual trips to New York, that's, that's a thing. But, what we're here to catch today, via subscriber request, mind you, we are going after the walleye. So let's say you're level 20 to 28-ish, and you're looking for a little thing to boost your wallet up a little bit. Walleye is the way to go. We've already covered how to catch the other predator in this lake. In fact, the walleye's main competition, which is the, uh, the pike, which are found way over here. But today I'm going to break it down for you three different steps. First, we're going to talk about location. Then we're going to talk about gear. And then we're going to talk about the retrieve. So first up, of course, location. Here we are at the Dock of Peace. We're going to be over here standing on the dock itself. Is it Dock? Dock of Peace. Like, for some reason I think Pier of Peace. But we're going to be casting out in this direction, this direction, and this direction. Well, more over here. Really, anywhere over here. The deep parts is, is uh, where they like to hang out. Now. There are three different types of predators. I think I've covered this in another video before. There are stalkers, there are hunters, and there are ambushers. For example, a pike would be an ambusher. It lays in wait for its prey to come and uh, find it, and then it springs the trap. Now walleye, on the other hand, hang out kind of low middle and look downwards. They're hunters, because not only do they eat other fish, they're omnivorous. So they, they're also looking for little tasty bits of plants and whatnot. Uh, so kind of the bear of this lake. But we're going to be taking advantage of the fact that they're looking downwards. We're going to keep our lure low. Not necessarily ground level, but just popping up and down right above that. But that's for the retrieve. Now let's go in and see exactly where I'm going to be casting today. I, of course, do have a favorite spot, just like everybody else. And your spot doesn't have to be my spot. But it is right here, casting at this bright clump of reeds. My second favorite spot, directly towards this maple, and lastly, in this direction. Now, let's cover that gear. Regardless of what you bring, you're going to have the best results if your rod can handle the weight of your lure accurately. So make sure that this matches up with this, and uh, your reel can handle the line. And your reel can ha and your line can handle the... yeah. Anyway, you form that circle of, of symbioticness. Symbius, symbus, sim, yeah, the symbiotic circle, that. So, you do that, you make sure everyone's getting along with each other mathematically, and you're going to have the longest cast possible. What I brought with me today is the Jig Winner 610. The Jig Winner 610 can handle 1 6th through 5 eighths ounce of lure. And I brought with me as a lure... And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this lure, I talked about it in my trout video as well for Oregon. It is my favorite of the narrow spoons. It is the narrow spoon, one fourth ounce, amylite, or purple, one fourth ounce, number one ot. And to drag that lure around today, I brought some fluorocarbon line. Fluorocarbon, I'm choosing for this lake because fluorocarbon kind of emulates the watercolor around it and since the watercolor around it is kind of see-through green I feel that it's gonna be it's gonna be a boon because predators that hunt like these guys do kind of have pretty good eyesight and so now the most important part of the gear make sure you got your license why you ask because it's a 2,000 credit fine if you happen to catch something that's you know anything all right, so now it's time to get to the meat and potatoes. We're going to be casting right out at this guy, this bright patch of reeds, and as far out as we can. So I want to let you in on a little secret, at least how I do things. If you look down at the bottom right of the screen, this doesn't have to necessarily be the way that you do it, but you can see my retrieve speed is at 3. My tension, well, that's going to vary depending on your gear, of course, so don't pay any attention to that. You find your own sweet spot. So retrieving on a three, what we're going to do, we're going to let it sit there for 10 seconds. Believe me, 10 seconds already passed. I know, don't worry. And then we're going to just do a simple stop and go right off the bottom. But we're going to be reeling twice. 
There we go. That's twice. Just like that. Oh, something I forgot to mention. These fish are peak hour fish. I'm not sure. I haven't seen much of a difference in the morning or in the evening. Uh, they seem to be active all day long. So remember, just go for the peak hours there. And before you know it, shaboom. Now, something to remember is that the places that are inhabited by walleye are also sometimes inhabited by pike. That being said, the places inhabited by pike are sometimes inhabited by walleye. Now let's say you were going to be doing this with a float lure. Small minnows, that's where it's at with the float lure. As you can see, they're worth a decent amount of money. More money per pound than a largemouth bass. But the large mouse, large mouse, yes, the large mouse bass, the largemouth bass can be caught more frequently than the walleye. So it's really kind of just how you want to take it kind of deal. Around this level, I used to go with bass, but now that I've kind of figured out walleye, if I had someone like me to show me, I think I'd be going walleye myself. Now let's go ahead and catch a couple more, shall we? we got another one here. Now, another thing you're going to be seeing a lot of, and I'm afraid that th that's what this one is, is there's going to be a few, a few pike. Oh, no, you know what? This might actually be a walleye or a northern pike. It's pulling me out a little bit. Let's, let's see. Or a trophy chain. That'd be good, too. Nope, walleye. Okay. But that being said, pike are still good money. Specifically the northern pike and the chain pickerel. That's, well, chain pickerel all right, but you can catch trophies with this lure as well, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> now, like I was saying earlier, if you're going for a float tackle, go ahead and uh, use number one odd hook and small minnows, but make sure to keep it around 35 to 50 inches in depth. When you're float fishing, it's good to keep the bait where they are, not where they're hunting. I'm not sure what the reason is there, but... Okay, yeah, I'm thinking that this guy, this got a lot of jump action going. Yep, there we go. Uh, trophy grass pickerel there. Now, a way that you can know before you reel them in is the, uh, the walleye don't jump around so much. They're, uh, they're good fighters for a perch, but, uh, they're not jumpers. Huh. I think that's a good one to end it on. That's the biggest one I've caught yet. So, let's finish this up with a little review, shall we? We're going to be fishing from the Dock of Peace. We're going to be casting out either to the left of the maple, right over here, a little bit further towards these reeds, or over here towards the bright green green. Bright green reeds. There we are. Not greeds. And because walleye tend to stick to lower middle looking downwards for food like trout do we're going to be doing a just a simple stop and go at a number three speed two reels make sure you don't have to have it hit the ground every time it's just I've had way more luck doing it They don't play around. If it's moving, they're going to bite it. Now, I've cast this thing out six or seven times now. Seven times, and this will be my fifth, I believe. Fifth walleye, and I got one chain pickerel. So, expect a few pickerel, but as you can see, this method works really well. And this is the latest version of this game as of October 2017, to, to put a date on this. And most importantly, for gear, that guy right there. Make sure you've got a, you've got a rig that can handle it perfectly. You know, the, the, the more perfect it is, the further your cast is going to be, regardless of your situation. 
And that's about it. But questions still remain. For example, what's the next fish we're gonna go after? Is it gonna be a big old lake trout? Maybe some catfish? Maybe a little tiny crappy crappy? You can find out the answers to those and more on the next episode of On Doom Gaming!